Remember the word, or I should say pathogen, is Shrikia shigella. All right, the reason that's important is this. Another cool way you'll be able to determine whether an apple was conventionally grown or organically grown without looking for pesticide residues, literally can be looking at its microbiome. At least if the outcome of this one particular study is validated, you can basically say a Shirikia shigella, although low, is gonna be found in conventionally grown apples, but not organically grown. In fact, in no organically grown apples, at least according to this particular study. NOAA is not found in conventionally grown apples, lactobacillus bacteria. But lactobacillus bacteria, that friendly probiotic was found in, of course, you got it, organically grown apples. This is gonna add a whole new dimension to the debate because we're not looking at nutrients such as vitamin A, B, C, and so forth, or the polyphenols. We're literally looking at the microbiome makeup. Now you may be saying, well, people wash their fruits or vegetables, whatever it is, so it's not gonna make a difference. Au contraire. This is the internal microbiome makeup of the apple itself. And each one had about 100 million bacteria. So think of it like seats in the bus. The difference is the seats were occupied more so by beneficial bacteria in the organic produce and not so much in the conventional. I don't wanna make this a debate in regard to conventional or organic. However, though, the results here are pretty clear in regard to health outcomes when associated with the microbiome. So with that in mind, let us proceed into the study as follows. An apple carries about 100 million bacteria. Good luck washing them off. Most microbes are inside the apple, but the strains depend on which bits you eat and whether you go organic. A shirikia, a shigella, a group of bacteria that includes known pathogens, was found in most of the conventional apple samples, but none from organic apples. For beneficial lactobacilli or probiotic fame, the reverse was true. And there may even be vindication for those who can taste the difference. So people think, well, it's organic, it must be subconscious or power, su I say subconscious, power suggestion, I apologize. Not so much. Uh, to could taste the difference in organic produce. Methylobacterium known to enhance the biosynthesis of strawberry flavor compounds was significantly more abundant in organic apples. Here, especially on the peel and flesh samples, which in general had a more diverse microbiota than the seed stem or calyx. All right, we're gonna go to the full study. On a read kind of fast, but it is so profound and so enlightening, I just couldn't drop it. This is part of the discussion, by the way, not the the news release, so you have to go to the actual uh, full study itself in order to read this. The order of Enterobacteriales, uh, uh, apologize about that, was one of the signature attacks of conventional apples as well among them. We would like to highlight the most ubiquitous occurrence of OTUs assigned to uh, basically the Shirakia shigella, uh, shirakia shigella in the tissues of conventional apples, although low abundant, and their absence in organically managed apples. All right, I want to stop for a second here. I want to bring up this chart. You see this particular chart? This is the bacteria which was shared in regard to conventional organic. And you see those branches right there between organic and conventional? That's where the differences began to really shine. Higher abundance of enterobacteria uh, bacteriales in conventional uh, fresh produces compared to organic equivalents have already been reported by other studies. Controversially, lactobacillus, which is frequently used within probiotics, was one of the core taxa of organic apples. The high diverse microbiome of organically managed apples might probably limit or hamper the abundance of human pathogens. Now we're going to the benefits basically of the bacteria associated with organic apples, simply by out-competing them. Remember I told you, uh, 100 million bacteria about the same in conventional organic. Think of it kind of like seats on a giant bus or a giant plane. You only have so many seats, depends who, whom you want to occupy those seats. Negative correlation between human pathogen abundance and the natural bi microbiome of fresh produce has already been described. The described microbiome patterns in organic apples resemble the impact of apple polyphenols on human health, which have not only been shown to alleviate allergic symptoms, but also to promote the growth of lactobacillus and bifidobac bifidobacterium in the human gut and to reduce Abundance of foodborne pathogens, ironic. Considering the specific microbiome signatures have potential to reduce food allergies, 
The native microbiome of organic and unprocessed apples could be an advantageous, advantageous tool to manage and prevent allergic diseases. Just quoting from the study itself. All right, we're gonna go over part of the conclusion from the full study, and then I'm gonna go to the conclusion of the press release, because they each kind of word it differently, but both incredibly cool, as follows. However, freshly harvested, organically managed apples harbor a significantly more diverse, more even and distinct microbiota compared to conventional ones. The abundance of almost 40% of bacterial genera in, order, in orders different, genera, genera, uh, differed significantly between organically and conventionally managed apples, 40%. Moreover, organic apples conceivably feature favorable health effects for the consumer, the host plant, and the environment in contrast to conventional apples, which were found to harbor potential foodborne pathogens. Again, keep in the context of the report in regard to this one particular study. There may be other conventional growing methods which were not incorporated into the study. I do not want to, or, uh, uh, how would you say, interject publisher bias. So I'll leave that for your own imagination, other researchers to check for confounding factors later on. But at least the corn's particular study were found to harbor potential foodborne pathogens. Now to the press release, which is the difference between the full study and the press release. Press release tends to be worded in uh, less technical terms. The microbiome and antioxidant profiles of fresh produce may one day become, because I love this part, a standard nutritional information displayed alongside macronutrients. So basically you'll have your proteins, your carbohydrates, your fats, your multivitamins, and then your microbiome layout. Vitamins and minerals to guide consumers, suggests the researcher. Here, a key step will be to confirm to what extent diversity in the food microbiome translates to gut microbial diversity and improved health outcomes. Going back to the area when he said similar results in this type of microbiome or bacteria were shown to help with the alleviation of food allergies and other health outcomes as well. So at least in this one particular study, in this one particular outcome, the differences between the microbiome between conventional and organic were so incredibly distinct that the conventional grown apples had bacteria that the organic ones did not, and the organic ones had bacteria on the inside, both of them, that the conventional ones did not. From there on, I'll let you decide which one you prefer. Again, this is Ralph Church Channel signing off. DOI citation links will be there for you to follow. And a little worried, so I apologize, but again, filled with information. You will find great information in regard to the full set itself. And again, the links will be there for you to go and research on your own. Again, Rod for channel signing off. Thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to see you all once again in seven days. Catch you then. Bye.